I'm so grateful to everyone who has listened to the podcast. And this year we are celebrating 50 episodes of the Health Analytic Insights podcast. So an awesome milestone. And to celebrate, I'll be doing a giveaway where I'll be sending the lucky winner of the contest a free copy of the ebook that I've written on how to start your career in health informatics and also providing a 30 minute call to review your resume, your statement of purpose, or provide any advice you might have about getting into the field of health informatics. So to enter, all you need to do is subscribe to the podcast or follow me on Instagram and take a screenshot of this and then send it to my email at healthanalyticinsights at gmail.com. All the contest details will be in the show notes below if you'd like to enter. Again, I'd like to thank everyone who has listened to the podcast. I really appreciate the emails that you send me, messages that you send on the YouTube channel and through email. They've really helped me to continue to keep creating content for the podcast. And I've had so many great conversations with you all. It's just wonderful to see the intelligence and the passion of people who are interested and who currently work in the field. So again, thank you so much for listening to the podcast. And if you want to enter the giveaway, all the details will be in the show notes below. Hi there. Welcome to the Health Analytic Insights Podcast. This podcast is all about creating a community of like-minded individuals who are passionate about the field of health informatics. I hope to share information and advice in topics such as health analytics, digital health, biomedical engineering, and data visualization in healthcare. And in exchange, I would love to hear from you, dear listener, about your experience and interest in this field. You can drop me a line at healthanalyticinsights at gmail.com and this email, along with any references discussed during this podcast, will be listed in the show notes below. If this resonates with you, don't forget to follow and subscribe to this podcast, as I'll be releasing new episodes bi-weekly. I recently received an insightful question from a listener of the Health Analytic Insights podcast, who asked me, what skill sets are important to be successful in the health informatics field? When I really sat down to think about this, the five skills I believe can really make an impact on helping you to advance in this field are being an analytical translator, technical experience, domain knowledge, critical thinking skills, and being a lifetime learner. So in this episode, I really want to dive into these five skills and why I think these skills can help advance your career. So being an analytical translator, I recently read an article from McKinsey and Company, which I'll link to in the show notes of this episode. And this article was titled, Analytics Translator, The New Must-Have Role, which describes an analytic translator as someone who's able to draw on their domain knowledge to help business leaders identify and prioritize their business problems based on what will create the highest value when solved. When I first read this, I was like, this describes the health informatic professional role in a nutshell. And I would say this is a critical skill for someone wanting to work specifically in the analytical side of healthcare. The ability to use your clinical knowledge or expertise to ask the right questions of clinical specialists is key and creating a product that will actually have value to the healthcare organization. I think that many of us can resonate with the phrase, nothing for us without us. And this boils down to making sure that before you start building a solution based on your own limited understanding, it's key to have conversations with clinical stakeholders. But it's also important to ask the right questions that get to the heart of the issue and not expecting others to have all the expectations clearly defined. So consider using SMART goals, which stands for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. One, tailoring your questions to clinical stakeholders to ensure the analytical product being produced 
is defined and will actually be used throughout the organization. There's been too many times when I've built reports and dashboards that have not been used because I didn't properly outline the needs of the stakeholders. I didn't ask the right questions. And that is key in this rule. If you want the hard work and the products that you produce to actually be used, which is the end goal. The next skill is technical experience. So if you're interested in working in the analytical side of the health informatics field, I would suggest learning SQL, which stands for Structured Query Language, and is used to manipulate and access data stored in databases. If you do a quick search on LinkedIn or Indeed for roles such as Clinical Informatics Specialist or Clinical Analyst, you might see that many of these roles are looking for individuals who have experience writing queries in SQL. In addition, you might want to learn a data visualization tool such as Power BI and Tableau. These data visualization tools are often used for presenting your insights to an audience who might not have a technical background by being able to tell a story from the numbers. And there's real power in being able to synthesize complex concepts for a wide audience. I always enjoy watching the YouTube series by Wired, where there's an expert who is able to explain one concept in five levels of difficulty. For example, there's one video where a computer scientist explains the concept of machine learning to a child, teen, college student, grad student, and an expert. In my opinion, the ability to be able to explain concepts to widely different audiences really showcases your mastery of the subject. And speaking of machine learning, if you're looking to the future with the rising implementation of machine learning algorithms in healthcare, specifically natural language processing, used to deal with unstructured free text data in a clinical setting, you might want to start to learn or pick up a tool such as Python or R. The third must-have skill for the health informatic professional to advance would be domain knowledge. Domain knowledge is quite key when working in health informatics, and you'll find that many positions look for a clinical experience or a relevant clinical degree. This is especially true if you're looking to specialize in something like nursing or pharmacy informatics. As a result, this can be a barrier to some, as clinical experience, of course, is not easy to obtain. You might consider volunteering at a help desk in the hospital to learn more about the ins and outs of a healthcare organization. And domain knowledge is not something that is obtained all at once. It's an ongoing learning process, but having even some foundational knowledge of the clinical area you're interested in, perhaps working as a research assistant, might help to get your foot in the door. And when it comes to increasing your domain knowledge, another tip is to find a mentor in the field, where you can also learn from their on-the-job experience and difficult situations they overcame within their career. Of course, finding a mentor is not easy. You want this process to happen organically, uh, but it can be difficult to initiate this. You might be blessed to find a mentor in your current manager, or you might be able to network with someone at an industry conference from a large-scale healthcare organization such as HIMSS, and then follow up with them later on LinkedIn and ask if they would be open to meeting up with you once a month for a quick career chat. Make sure to come prepared with interesting questions and don't forget to ask what you can do for them as this will result in a more symbiotic relationship instead of just take, take, take. The next must have skill are critical thinking skills. So of course, critical thinking skills are important to have in life in general, but working in this field, you often have to be solutions focused. In my opinion, healthcare is such an interesting field because there are oftentimes situations or cases that you can never anticipate which crop up, as the human body is such an amazing marvel. I've been watching Human, The World Within on Netflix, and the amount of automatic processes within our body just plugging along without any interferences on our part is is mind-numbing. Therefore, I find that working in health informatics, you always have to be on your feet and looking for ways to mitigate future problems and how you can reduce the burden for the clinician through the use of informatics so they can continue to do their job at a high level. And finally, the last must-have skill I believe is key to advancing within the health informatics field is being a lifelong learner. This is tied to increasing your domain knowledge as well. 
As the healthcare field is rapidly changing, and 2020 and 2021 have been proof of this, I think that to advance in this field, it is important to be aware of the latest technologies and trends which are on the rise. I think one cannot go at this alone. I would consider joining large health informatics groups, such as your local HIMSS, which stands for Healthcare Information and Management System Society group, or the digital health or informatics groups within your area. As it's important to learn from a wide range of people in the healthcare field, from patient advocates, social workers, nurses, etc., this can really help you to get a 360 degree view of the problems in healthcare and how you can make the biggest impact. So currently I'm studying to obtain my Certified Professional in Healthcare Information and Management Systems Certification. That is a mouthful. And it's really opened my mind to the many different areas that health informatics is integrated within healthcare. So you could consider taking a course or starting your certification process as well as a way to continue to learn more about this field. So I hope this episode has provided you with some more insights into how you can advance and hopefully continue to be successful in the health informatics field. If you're at the start of your health informatics journey, check the show notes of this episode where I've linked to a free guide to starting your career in health informatics. Thank you for listening to the Health Analytic Insights Podcast. I'd love to hear from you about topics I should cover in future episodes. Please consider subscribing and leaving a review. Have a wonderful day.